On the phone, we have legendary Minneapolis Lakers and Minnesota Golden Gophers coach John Condor. How you doing, John? Just fine. Doing just fine. When you were playing at Minnesota back in the 30s, what was Big Ten basketball like back then? Well, it was pretty well distributed. We we won in 1939. I think we 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 tied with Illinois. Ohio State was still tough. It was it was pretty well balanced. Who was your coach back then with uh, the Gophers? Dave McMillan. Dave McMillan was my coach, and as I say, uh, he he was a fa- he had a fast break style, and we, we did very well. We, we had set set plays. We used set plays a lot, and uh, as I say, later on he he came. Became my assistant in pro. Okay, and then you were his assistant for a while. Then you went on to be the head coach at Minnesota. What was that like? Well, that, that was uh, it was after the war. I became assistant at the university, uh, but I, I I was assistant with Dave McMillan at the university uh, after after the war. Because you were in World War II, right, in the Navy? Yeah, I, I went, to, went to war in 1944, and I came back, and uh, Dave McMillan, my f- former coach, hired me as assistant. And then I, I was with him for a year, and I went to St. Thomas from there. And from St. Thomas, I went to the pros. I see that when you were in the war, you were in the... Landing ship and tank unit. What did you do? Yeah, I was I was an ensign, ensign, and I uh, landing landing ships and tanks, LST landing ships and tanks. We carried thirteen tanks, and and also we carried ammunition and, and a lot of recruits at the same time. Where were you stationed? Where did you uh, go overseas? I had the most exciting experience. After six weeks of training in Florida, I was shipped over right right over to the Utah Beach to, to bring bring a second to the Utah Beach, and from there I kept moving all the time. After I discarded the, uh, the recruits for Utah. To the, we went back to London, and from London, we went to Edinburgh to give up our LST to Russia. And then I came back to the United States, and uh, I was shipped over to to uh, a ship in the Pacific. I went all the way from San Francisco to the Philippines to uh, uh, all, all We kept moving all the time. And as I say, uh, never once we were stationed in one one spot, we just kept moving from one spot to another. We ended up in in uh, Bermuda. Uh, well, I got I got sick in in, uh, in on a ship, and then I was shipped back to Hawaii, and I got a ship, a medicine ship, back to Minneapolis, or Minnesota. Oh, okay. So, you probably couldn't wait to get back to Minnesota. Yeah. So I was on I was on both sides in, uh, of, the, of the war, Pacific Atlantic and Pacific, and as I say, I just kept moving all the time. And then when you came back to Minnesota, when you were coaching in college as the head coach at Minnesota, what made yeah. you want to go to the Lakers? Well, uh, I was at St. Thomas when the, the Lakers hired me. Uh, Sid Hartman, a sports writer from Minneapolis, came to me and uh, uh, wanted me to coach the Lakers. I turned them down for for a month. He kept kept after me, but he he got fifteen thousand dollars from Mr. Berger to buy the franchise, and he bought the franchise for fifteen thousand dollars. Believe it or not, from Detroit. I, in the meantime, he, he signed Jim Pollard from the the coast from Stanford. He played at the Denver tournament. And he 
to take five of those players of him. Then, then he turned around and they wanted to sign Joe Hutton of, of uh, Hamlin for the coach. And Joe Hamlin turned him down and came to me. And I, 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 I turned him down, as I say, and uh, he kept after me. Uh, I didn't think it was going because Minnesota basketball was too popular. But anyway, he finally t- talked to me, and uh, he came to my apartment and talked to my wife, and I finally signed, as I say, the, the smartest thing I ever did. And in the meantime, uh, after he signed me, he got George Mikan to sign. He brought him in from Chicago, and, and uh, they sort of tricked uh, Mikan. Uh, he, he wouldn't sign, and he went to the airport, and they, they, they t- took him to the wrong airport, and then... He stayed overnight. The following morning, he signed. Signed. So, he set up the whole thing, and he also signed the two former Minneapolis players, Chicago players, Sweet Carlson and Tony Jarris, were playing with with uh, Chicago, and uh, he brought those in. And I, I started off with Mike in and uh, Jim Pollard, as they say. Uh, how lucky can you get? And I, I've got a thank and I'm most, most grateful to Sid Hartman for, for persistence to have me sign. So it was all luck, as I say. He set up the whole thing, and we won, we won the national championship the next year. And uh, because we won that, Mr. Pondoff invited us to the NBA, and that's how the whole thing started. And we won, a, won the championship. World Championship for the next five years. And I, I, I really have to thank Sid Hagman for setting up the whole thing. I see that he, he upped your salary to, what, $6,000 he got to get you to coach the Lakers, which was That's twice right. your St. Thomas salary? At that time, I, I, was, I was making $3,000 at St. Thomas, and they, they offered me $6,000, which was doubled. And then Mike and... Well, it was off. I think the highest pay he got was fifty, uh, fifty-seven thousand dollars. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Mike and fifty-seven thousand dollars. So, so that's that's. Uh, I gave him a lot of credit. He set up the whole thing, and uh, you had a lot of Hall of Famers you coached. You yeah, had yeah. Pollard, Mike yeah. and Vern Mickelson. Yeah, Vern Mickelson was, was a Hamlin player, and then also we signed up uh, Warren Ajax, Warren Ajax, Don Smith, other local players to add the interest to, to, to Minnesota. So we, we had a, a lot of Minnesota players on there, but Mike and Pollard were, and, and uh, Mickelson were the big Slater Martin, Bobby Harrison. Uh, Pep Saul, we, we had a great lineup. We had a, players who played teams. Like, we had trouble at the beginning. No, no trouble. Unbelievable trouble we had. Uh, we, we passed the mic and all, and all fall back. As, as a matter of fact, the first game we played, uh, we, we passed the wild mic and all five defensive went back to back to. In on Mike and he couldn't even get a shot off, and we finally got got organized. And there was a little friction between Pollard and, and Mike and uh, because Pollard was playing the first five games without Mike and, and uh, he was the captain. And uh, I think he he sort of resented uh, Mike at first, but we finally got together thanks to. Uh, the, the players who became team ball players, um, as they say, it, it took, a, took a little while, but it worked out real well. How did you handle the friction between Powered and Mike? And- well, at first, I think there was a little jealousy between them. Uh, uh, for first of all, <laughs> the first time Mike joined us, uh, I, I had a habit of giving three plays to start off with. And I, I, I'm try, talking away, uh, Mike is praying. <laughs> and she said, Jim Pollard said, will you shut up? I can't hear kind of talk. And I thought they were going to come to blows. But as I say, we finally got together, and uh, uh, Herb Schaefer 
you got to get all three of us together and said, look, look, he said, if you, if you, my, my, my make it in father, if you, you players get together, nobody's going to beat us. And, and from then on, I say, we got together and, and uh, played team ball. Because you won, uh, what, five titles in six years? Right, five titles, right. And uh, five NBA titles and one national VA championship. The first year was national basketball. So, and the Rochester that, Royals beat you. Who was on their team when they beat you? Uh, who beat us? Yeah, Rochester Royals beat you. What players were on the Royals at that time? Oh, uh, the, the biggest uh, Rochester was a, one of our biggest competitors. And uh, as I say, uh, when Pollard retired, when, when Pollard went to uh, coaching and Mike and retired, and Mike and coached for one year and I became general manager. Uh, so that, that's when we started losing. <clears throat> yeah, because I'm looking at Rochester. They had Bob Davies, Al Servi, George Glamick, and Otto Graham for a while. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, 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 as I say, we we beat the the teams. Uh, Rochester gave us the most trouble. Davies and and uh, uh, Syracuse gave us a lot of trouble too. Dolph Shays and and uh, but uh, as I say, once Mike and retired, we, we were a different team. <laughs> no question about it. Who is the best p- player you ever won against coaching? Well, George Michael, he's Mr. Basketball, no question about it. He he was really good to coach. He he took criticism, and as I say, uh, uh, he was a real team man. Uh, I think everybody everybody liked him because he played defense. He was everybody played defense together, and, and uh, that was a good defensive team. So you Rochester. ran a lot of fast break, then you weren't like a zone team back then, were you? The what? Did you run a lot of fast break on offense? Yes. Or oh yeah, we, fast break was one of our best. We had good rebounding. We, we had the best rebounding team in Mike and Pollard and and uh, Vern Mickelson. Now Vern Mickelson played in the pivot in college, and uh, we we tried a double pivot and that didn't didn't work out at all, and finally. Uh, Mickelson adapted himself to the forward position, and he did a lot of feeding. He developed a shot, overhead shot, and he was one of the leading uh, assist players to Mike. And as I say, our rebounding was terrific on both ends of the court with Mike and Pollard and Mickelson. Why did they move the Lakers from Minneapolis to Los Angeles? The, the what? Why did the team move from Minnesota oh. to Los Angeles? Well, well, when Mike and retired and Pollard was gone, it felt the attendance went way down. They were used to winning all the time and they couldn't take it, so uh, what do you call it? Sold it to uh, uh, L.A. We sold our five t- national titles to L.A. so they could beat Boston's. Boston's. Uh, they, 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 I think Boston at that time won about seven or eight championships, and, and we gave our five to L.A. Lakers. We, they called the L.A. Lakers. They had no links out there. So that was another funny thing. Exactly. They took our, exactly, like Utah with the Jazz. The Jazz was yeah. New Orleans. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and really strange how it worked out. But, but uh, they, they honored us. We gave them those five titles Took Pollard, Pollard, uh, Mike and uh, Slater Martin and uh, uh, Jelly Belly and Clyde Lavella to uh, they brought us out to Chicago. I mean, brought us to L.A. first class and gave us some beautiful rings for for what we gave for giving all those five titles. Did you get any rings back then in the 50s when you were coaching, or they didn't give rings then? No, we didn't give rings. Minneapolis never gave rings. Washington and other teams did give rings, but the only, only rings we got was when we gave our five 
titles to LA. LA gave us some fine rings, unbelievable rings. So your owner was kind of frugal back then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then how come you didn't go to Los Angeles to coach the Lakers when they moved? Well, they asked me to to move with the LA, but I I, I didn't like the, whatever the reports I heard about LA and everything, the drugs and everything. I, so I turned them down and stayed here and went to the University of Minnesota instead. And when you were coaching in Minnesota, you recruited three black players, which was unheard of back then. Well, that's right. I, I still got some nasty letters for doing that, but I, I was brought up uh, in Central High, a mixed group. I, I sat next to a, bl- a black in, in high school, and it never bothered me a bit. And as I say, I had a lot, a lot of black friends in Central High School. And uh, uh, what do you call it? We got uh, three, three players, Archie Clark, Lou Hudson, and uh, Yates. Three black players came with it. Some of the other coaches in the NFL recommended to them. Uh, who was it? One, one of the players had, had, had uh, Lou Hudson's mother for, for a maid, and uh, she, she recommended uh, Lou Hudson to come to Minnesota with me. What did the university say about your decision? Did they back you? No, 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 no trouble at all there. I said, I said a lot of nasty, nasty letters came for a while, but now, now it's a different story. They, took, they proved to be great ball players. Because where I went to college at Loyola in Chicago, George Ireland had four black players on the team when they won the championship in '63. Yeah, yeah, and what do you call it? Uh, Mike my, my, my and Went, went to Notre Dame and they, they turned him down there. And as I say, uh, he came to Chicago, and made himself a big name, and thanks to the coach there, Ray Meyer. Ray, Ray Meyer was a great coach, and and he, uh, I, I thank him for what, what he said about about me as a coach. But uh, Ray Meyer. The way, the way he coached Mike and I, unbelievable. He's, he t- he showed me a lot of a lot of things of what to do. But when Mike can take a thousand shots and, and then Mike and Drill is famous. I said I've given to to everybody since that Mike and Drill has become famous. Oh but yeah, with uh, getting making layups with the right hand and the left yeah, hand simultaneously. Right, right, yeah, that, that's a great drill. And I gave all of my grand all of my grand, boy grandchildren the. They all became bad. They all became good ball players. Yeah, the one uh, basically just graduated last year, Noah, and now he's playing overseas. Well, correct. He's up in. Uh, <clears throat> he, he signed a two-year contract with um, what was it, Macedonia, and he's doing real well there. And as I say, he he, he picked up that drill real well, and he became a great defensive man at Wolford College. So. Did you help? Did you coach them when they were growing up to make them better players? Well, I, I gave I gave them those drills, and another dr- drill I gave them is sit up against the wall and dribble a ball and, and watch me, and, and uh, I'd give them direction. They could dribble with, dribble with, without look, looking at the ball, but looking at me, and I'd give them directions, left hand, right hand, and so forth. Little, two little drills, but I gave, gave them the course of my Mike and drill. Wolf players, Isaiah and Noah both use that drill a lot. What do you think about uh, today's game? Well, it's, it's a different game. As I say, uh, we, the three-point play has made such a big difference in in the game. And uh, they're, they're all – players are taller. They can jump higher. And as I say, uh, they're better shots than average. Their three-pointers are unbelievable the percentage of shots and how good they, they, they develop that three-point play. But it's also getting a lot of trouble taking bad shots and shooting too quick and so forth. But uh, it, it, the people like the game. And uh, same way, Doug, I hate to see dunking, but, but people like it. 
you, you can't you can't defend so you can you, if you try to stop it you can break your break your wrist and everything. But uh, people like like the dunking and and as I say it, it's a great game of shooting percentage is unbelievable. I mean, you had a very athletic player your last year coaching Elgin Baylor. I mean, can you imagine Elgin Baylor in today's NBA? Yeah, right. Elgin Baylor was a great example. Uh, he was unbelievable shot. He he get a rebound and turn around and throw throw a long pass. Unbelievable what he could do. He rebounded, and as they say, he had great shots and great moves. Uh, he, he was amazing. Uh, he, the first year he was with us, he became the most valuable player of the year. In his first year, he, he was unbelievable. When you look at coaches like Red Auerbach, what he did and what you did, and now they compare Phil Jackson to Red and you, what do you think about that? Well, uh, repeat that again. When people talk about Phil Jackson saying Phil basically accomplished more than Red did or something similar to what Red Arbor accomplished and something similar to what you accomplished, what do you think about that? Do you think it was harder what you accomplished or what Phil accomplished? Well, I, I say i got to thank the players. I mean, uh, their ability and their, they played as a team. Uh, we're, we're looking for individuals. You, you see these these players uh, will just look for their own scoring average and uh, looking for the salary higher salary. But but I, I Mike and Mickelson Pollard, uh, Slater Martin, Bobby Harrison. You can't be them. They, they were team ball players. They played together and uh, they didn't care who scored. But as long as we played. Defense was a real key to, to, to our team. As, as I say, uh, uh, Mike and Paul and Mickelson on the backboards especially uh, really uh, the, whole, the key to our winning was, was uh, our defense most of all. Because, I mean, you see the European basketball was more like the old-time NBA basketball. They play defense. They don't dunk as much. It's more team-oriented, it seems like. Right, you know. I agree with you, dude. Uh, you, you can see some of these players. Unbelievable. I had to cut some of these players after after they played five or six years. I had to think it was to cut some of these players that did so much in the previous. But all these new players coming up, you had to, you had to cut them in. That was a tough part of the job to release some of these players. There's other players. Well, we had, we had a big center backing up George. You know, I'll never forget that. He was about six seven, six eight, and uh, we had a tough game. And finally, we got about a ten point lead. I, I give Mike an arrest for the last two minutes. I, I called him and I said, "Go in for go in for George Mike." And, and he says, "Oh, there's only two minutes left. I don't want to go in." The next day, of course, I had to cut. It. You, I cut those guys right, right off. I'll never forget anybody who, a player like that. Be glad to cut them. What do you think about the players today basically dictating who they want to play with, like in Miami with LeBron wanting to play with Wade and Bosh, and now Dwight Howard saying he only wants to play for certain teams? Oh, unbelievable. This, uh, this James... Uh, Unbelievable in ways. I mean, the two combinations, and the shooting and the driving, the speed they got, it's unbelievable. And they're getting better every year. I, mean, it's, I, I just can't get over. Uh, well, well, take Toby Bryant. My God, he's an unbelievable shot. I, I, I sat in an LA game, right, right on, on the right hand side where, where he positioned. And I see him, he got that ball and that quick move done for the base. He's unbelievable. And, and he's shooting. He goes straight up in the air and, and he throws the ball up and he comes right straight down. He, his shooting is unbelievable. The guy, that, as I say, uh, he's still, for how many years has he played now? And he's, he's still a great shot. He's still tough to beat. Uh, he doesn't have the, the help like like the former 
Laker teams it up, but he, he's still a great ball player. Do you kind of think if I was coaching today, I'd be making five, six, seven million dollars a year? I wish I was coaching nowadays. Oh, well, at, at that time, six thousand dollars was was pretty good money, and uh, prices were a lot lower. I, I, I remember I brought a house which I just sold last year uh, for nine thousand. I think I, I bought it for nine thousand. And sold it for ninety thousand. So uh, unbelievable at that time. Now, my God, I don't know what they try. I think you, they get charged double now. But the the the, the salaries they're getting nowadays is that's hard to believe. I just, I just I just can't believe it. Look but, at the uh, Lakers. I mean, you said they were originally purchased what for fifteen thousand in the fifties. Now they're probably worth a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah oh, isn't that something? Oh, I I can't get over it. It's almost shameful what they're getting. I I mean, I I didn't make a million dollars in, uh, in all, my, all my whole career, but now my a million is nothing. So, so it's a different different game, different different time. What but was I, your favorite moment in coaching? Oh, uh, we beat New York in, at New York. And uh, right after the game, uh, Mike had put me on the shoulders, and uh, Pollard and uh, Slater Mike had, had a picture there. And that picture has brought I had more, more of those pictures sent to me from France and Germany and everything. Uh, that picture really made me. But after that game, we went. Well, we all went to the church together, said our prayers, and then we went to the Copacabana and celebrated. And as I say, we had, we had a great time there. And the next day, they kept us over. We went to the Yankee Stadium, and we, we met Casey Stegel and Yoga Berra. So that was that was the greatest weekend. And then the following week, weekend, we went on uh, uh, the show, what do you call a show there, on Sunday. Ed Sullivan? Yeah, Ed Sullivan's show. Mike and myself. So that was a great weekend, and I'll never forget it. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Kundal. It was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. yeah. What was that last one? It was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Glad to talk old times. You need something. I, I, I can't get over myself to have a bunch of guys like that. I, I can't thank him enough. Exactly. And Sid Hartman, I got it. I got to really thank him. He set the whole thing up. If it wasn't for him, I, I wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. So. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good day.